channel and everyone who couldn't join will be able to watch it. And Allison, I'm just going to mute myself and uh, you can just start the presentation. Uh, uh, questions and answers. Uh, do you want to answer at the end all the questions? Um, I, I guess my thought was maybe um, it might be easier if um, I can go through the whole presentation first and if, if folks have questions, they can ask them, you know, in the chat box during, um, but maybe then um, we'll save about, you know, 20 minutes, maybe at the end for, for questions if people, um, you know, we can either go back and look at the chat log or if they have live questions at the end, they can ask, the, ask those. Does that work? Yes, this is great. So. Okay going to mute myself and we can start okay great well thank you um thank you so much for the opportunity um my name is allison hergett i'm associate director of international admission at, at villanova university um and if we were if we were in a room together i would uh you know in person i would ask you know how many of you have, have heard of villanova before um i suspect uh you know since um it seems like we're, we're relatively um, sort of unknown in your part of the world that maybe not that many of you would would raise your hands, but um, that's uh, that's absolutely why I'm here and I'm really excited to be able to um, to present to all of you today. Um, and just so you have kind of an outline of what to expect. Um, so I, I have a, you know, a brief presentation about Villanova. So just kind of an introduction to um, to who we are and, and what we stand for. Um, and then the second part of the presentation, um, uh, I'll be talking a little bit about it, the sort of the admissions process at um, selective universities. And, um, you know, I'll be doing so in, in a little bit of a, a general manner, but I'll also, of course, you know, talk about specifically what you would need to submit um, if you decided to apply to, um, to Villanova and um, also a little bit about financial aid as well. So I hope that um, all of this information is, um, is helpful to you. I know that there's a lot of, um, you know, there's over 3,500 schools in the United States. And so it can be kind of overwhelming to um, figure out and sort of distinguish what makes one school different um, from another. But uh, my goal today is gonna be to share with you, I think some of the things that make Villanova um, just a little bit unique um, in um, in our, our our education space here. So, and if you do have any questions, um, I'm sure there'll be you know we can always follow up with email afterward um, with the mass email. But you can see my um, my contact information at the bottom of the screen here if you do have any additional questions. Um, and I do oversee all undergraduate admissions uh, for international students at Villanova. So I would be um, your contact. So um, just to give you an overview, of a little bit of, of who we are, um, you know, so we are a, um, a medium-sized institution uh, by U.S. standards. We have about 6,500 undergraduates and about 10,000 students total. So I would consider us, you know, kind of a medium-sized institution. Certainly in the United States, there's, um, you know, schools out there that have tens of thousands of students and some of the smaller liberal arts colleges that have you know, for instance, maybe a few hundred students, right? And so we're kind of that that happy medium, I think, where um, you still, um, you know, are able to, to come to the United States, get that sort of quintessential American college experience. Um, you know, you can see from the, the previous uh, slide here, that's a, that's a shot of campus. It's absolutely beautiful. Um, it's very residential. Most of our students will live on campus for at least three years. Um, if not four years. And so you get that, that residential experience as well. Um, we are located just outside of Philadelphia. So um, about 10 kilometers west of Philadelphia, which is actually the fifth largest city in the United States. And, um, you know, a lot of times when I travel and I meet with international students and they're, they're looking at the United States, they, they tend to look at, you know, New York City, Boston, maybe some West Coast, you know, LA, some of the UC schools. Um, but, you know, Philadelphia area, um, the immediate Philadelphia area has over 80 plus colleges and universities just in this, in this immediate area right here. And so it's actually um, kind of a college city. 
And a lot, of, a lot of students don't realize that. It's a really wonderful city. It's extremely diverse, um, fairly large city, um, extremely accessible. So um, if you fly into Philadelphia International Airport, there's a regional train service. You can get right on the train, get to Center City, Philadelphia, and then take another train directly um, to our campus. Um, and we're just about 25 minute, 30 minute train ride from Center City, Philadelphia. So if you're looking to be close to a, a really great major city in the United States, but not necessarily right in the middle of an urban environment, um, I think that we can be a really, um, a really great fit for you. Um, and if you look at our seal, and you, unfortunately you can't, um, you can't really read it on this slide, but um, if you look at the seal of Villanova, it says three words, veritas, unitas, and caritas. Uh, which is uh, Latin for truth, unity, and love. And so everything that we do on our campus has to do with creating a sense of community. Um, in fact, uh, you know, we were talking about Villanova in the, in the beginning of the presentation about the term Villanova, and it actually translates from Latin and it means new home. So I think that in and of itself really tells you how much we value creating a sense of community on campus. And um, some of that actually ties back to, um, back to our roots as being founded as an institution to educate the children of Irish immigrants um, who um, you know, were a group in the United States who typically did not have access to, to education, to higher education. And so we were uh, founded on the premise of, of access. And um, yes, we are a Catholic institution. Um, we are actually the only Augustinian Catholic institution um, in the entire United States. If you've heard of, um, you know, schools like Boston College or Georgetown or some of the other um, uh, religious uh, Catholic schools out there, um, many of those schools are, are Jesuit. Um, we are Augustinian. And, um, you know, depending on who you talk to, there's, uh, you know, there's some, you know, big or very subtle differences there. But the Augustinians really are about creating a sense of community on campus and, and, and everything that we do. So I especially like to, um, to hone in on that for our international students because you're going to be coming from so far away to, to campus and you wanna know that you're going to be a part of a, of a tight knit community. And I do think at Villanova that you will certainly um, have, the, have the opportunity to do that. Um, the fact that we're a Catholic institution, of course, by no means, you know, does that mean that you have to be Catholic in order to attend Villanova? Uh, you know, we have students from over a dozen different religions represented on campus, students who are not religious. Um, you know, there's no requirement to, um, to go to mass or to participate in religious services, but um, certainly if that's something that you're interested in, whether you're, you're Catholic, you know, or you're not, um, you're welcome um, to do that. So that's a little bit about kind of the fabric of our, of our community there. And I'll, I'll talk about that again, um, kind of at the end of the presentation. But to dive into academics, I can tell you a little bit about our academic structure. Uh, we have, um, as I mentioned earlier, we are a medium-sized school, so we have, uh, you know, a little over 6,500 undergraduates, and within that, we have four different academic colleges. So the first is our College of Liberal Arts and Sciences. Um, that is our largest and our oldest academic college, um, and that is also where you would begin your Villanova career if you're not sure what you would like to study. So um, similar to some other schools in the United States, you can apply undecided, um, in which case you would start off in the College of Arts and Sciences, and then you would have until the end of your second year um, to declare your major. So um, we do kind of offer that liberal arts foundation to, um, to your education. Um, the second is the Villanova uh, School of Business. You may have heard of uh, our business programs actually was ranked number one undergraduate business program by Bloomberg Business Week um, in the last year that they did those undergraduate rankings. So it's one of the top business programs in the United States. Um, you know, all majors, everything from accounting to uh, international business to 
business analytics. That's one of our more recent and more popular majors. Um, so all very, very strong business programs. Um, we also have our College of Engineering, which is equally strong. We offer five different engineering programs um, and a school of nursing as well. So uh, a variety of different programs there, 50 plus majors, um, a, you know, a lot of different minors and different concentrations. And, um, you know, I would estimate probably between 35 and 40% of our students will either double major or major and minor um, in different areas. And so that can be done within the same academic college or it can be done across academic colleges as well. So if you're a student, you say you're interested, you know, for instance, in psychology, but you'd like to pair that with a, um, a business minor or perhaps, uh, you know, a, um, a minor in uh, global health, you can, um, you can do that very easily. And um, in most cases, you can still graduate in four years. So you do have a, a lot of um, flexibility there. And uh, you know, I be, would be remiss if I did not mention, yes, we are in that top 50 list for US News and World Report. Um, we like to say that we're kind of humble and hungry at Villanova, so we don't usually talk about rankings too much, but I do know that in some cases those are, um, excuse me, very important to international students. And so that is uh, one of the reasons that I, that I bring that up. So I think that's just evidence, um, of course, that you know, if you do come to Villanova, you know that you will get a, um, you know, a world-class education. And so one of the most, um, you know, I guess, frequent questions that I get is, is, well, what is it like to actually be a Villanova student on a day-to-day -day basis? And uh, certainly, you know, as I just alluded to, I would say that it is a, a very rigorous academic environment. And regardless of where you're coming from, I think that you will certainly be challenged in the classroom. Um, our classroom environment is, um, is very unique in the sense that we're a medium-sized school, but our average class size is still only 22 students. Um, and we don't have large lecture halls on campus, and so you're not going to have lectures with, you know, three or 400 students because we actually don't have classroom spaces that, um, that's, that seat that many students, right? So you're going to get that kind of smaller learning environment. Um, which again goes back to that, that sense of community that I talked about earlier that we're really trying to create both inside and outside of the classroom. Um, so I think, you know, again, regardless of where you're coming from, whether it's Kazakhstan or, uh, you know, China or Latin America um, or domestically, you will be challenged at Villanova academically. However, I would say that one of the things that our students appreciate most about the environment is that it is not a, um, a cutthroat academic environment where it's so hyper competitive and you constantly feel like you're competing with your neighbors to see who's going to get the higher GPA or test score. Um, it's very much um, a mindset of I'm going to come to Villanova because I want a great education, um, but I also want to be really well balanced. Um, and so you know, the, the life outside of the classroom if, to us is just as important as the academic experience. Um, so a little bit about some of, of what you can get involved with at Villanova. Um, if you're not familiar, we are a pretty big uh, sports school. We are Division I sports, which is the highest tier of athletics in the United States. Um, I'm actually, uh, uh, you'll have to inform me about this at the end. I don't know too much about this, but um, I, I don't know if students in Kazakhstan are interested in basketball at all, but uh, we, um, our men's team actually um, has won the, the national championship uh, twice in the last, uh, I guess, four or five years now. So um, our, our basketball program is top notch. That's really what we're most well known for in the United States, but um, we have a lot of very strong um, athletic programs all at that top tier level. And, um, even if you don't uh, like or care about basketball, I think one of the nice things about being at an institution that is a division one sports school is that you get a lot of school spirit from that. 
Um, and so it really enhances that sense of community on campus. You always see students outside in their Villanova sweatshirts and are very proud to be Villanovans. And um, some of that, you know, has to do with our athletic history. So uh, sports are very big. Certainly most students are not playing division one sports because it's, it's so extremely competitive. But if you are interested in athletics, um, we do offer club and intramural sports as well. And uh, those are a little bit less competitive and um, I would say about overall, um, over 70% of our students are participating in some kind of athletic activity. So it is an extremely um, active campus. Some of the other things that our students get involved with, there's you know, over 250 clubs and organizations, but um, some of the more uh, common themes, I would definitely say community service um, and charity work. And some of that goes back to our, our mission, um, you know, truth, unity, and love, and the importance of always giving back to others. But some of our largest events on campus, some of our campus traditions, uh, we have a, a big event um, that we host every year called the, the Special Olympics. And it's the actual uh, event itself is the largest student-run Special Olympics event in the world. Um, and we bring about 400 coaches to campus, about a thousand different uh, uh, athletes to campus to participate in these in these games. And it's a really nice way for um, you know for our students to see that event in action, but also to get involved with with leadership roles and things like that. So, um, and just to give you a sampling of other activities, certainly arts and culture organizations. We have a a new performing arts center which um, is uh, is opening up this year. And um, of course, you know, international student organization is very important to us as well. Uh, the girl who's the current president is actually a, a sophomore at Villanova, and so uh, from India. And I bring that up because uh, sometimes when you're at larger schools, you know, you don't necessarily have the opportunity to get involved with um, leadership positions as an underclassman, you know, as a freshman or sophomore. And I think at Villanova, because we're that medium size and because of our active student life, um, you do have the opportunity to get involved with more leadership roles um, as an underclassman than you would uh, perhaps otherwise. So if that's something that you're interested in, um, that's another great reason to um, consider us. And uh, I just like to include this side because I know that, uh, you know, there's always a lot of talk. I mean, just in general, education in the United States is very expensive. Um, it's, you know, more expensive than other systems throughout the world. And I know there's always a question about value, um, you know, for your, for your families, if they're going to send you to the United States, they want to know that you're going to be able to do something really great um, with, your, with your degree. And so, um, I, you know, so I should say that this slide really encompasses data from a, um, a big survey that our career services office does every year to find out what Villanova students are doing after graduation. Um, and as you know, for international students, um, it is the regulation, federal regulations around those opportunities can be extremely restricted. Um, but all of the uh, employers that you see listed up here are actually employers that have hired international students for internships or for jobs, um, you know, whether that is temporarily um, for optional practical, uh, practical training or uh, permanently after they graduate. So, um, you know, this is, this is all, I think, very impressive data. Um, this is all within the last, you know, five years. Um, and you can see that we do have a very strong placement rate, both for our, you know, domestic and international students. So I would encourage you as you look at schools in the United States to, um, you know, to ask about data like this, um, because it is very important when you're thinking about, um, about value of US education. So um, I'll talk about this very briefly, and then I'll kind of go into an overview of the admission process. And then what we can do is kind of cycle back at the end, I think, to some of, um, some of these points as I talk about the admission process specifically at Villanova. But just so you have an understanding of kind of what, um, what we're looking at when we're evaluating your application, you may have heard this term, um, holistic review process. Um, a lot of colleges and universities in the United States have what they would, would call a holistic review process. 
which simply means that we're looking at a variety of factors when we are um, evaluating your application. So we know, you know, particularly from the international perspective, there's a lot of systems out there, right, where you, you take one, one test and your performance on that exam dictates where you're able to go to university in that country. Um, and I apologize, I don't uh, know exactly what the, what the landscape is in, in Kazakhstan, but I know in you know, a lot of countries, that's, that's, the, um, that's, that's how that process works. And the United States is kind of the opposite of that. So, you know, I would certainly say that academics are the most important. So your performance, uh, you know, in secondary school is really the best indicator that we have as admissions officers when, we're re when we are reviewing your files of how well you would do in a rigorous college environment like Villanova, right? And so we're looking very closely at your grades um, and also what courses you're taking um, if you have a, a choice in your curriculum. So that is very, very important to us. Um, there's a variety of other factors that we look at as well. Um, and I'm, I'm gonna, I know I have financial aid on here. I'm actually gonna come back to that at the end because I know there's, there's always a lot of questions about that and a lot of different points that I want to, um, to discuss regarding that. But just to kind of unpack a little bit further um, about what goes into an admissions decision, um, there's a variety of factors and um, you know, I will say for this section, I'll be speaking um, generally about selective admissions in the United States, uh, but I'll also kind of use some examples from Villanova uh, to, to highlight exactly how the, the process works. Um, but to kind of unpack that, that first component, you know, academics. Um, academics are, again, really the most important thing that we're looking at when we're evaluating your application. Um, and when we say academics and your secondary school transcript, what we really mean is your grades um, or GPA and also your curriculum. Um, and so this is, the curriculum piece is um, a little bit harder to define in an international context, right? Because there's so many different types of schools and curriculums out there. Um, but we, we want to see that you are taking among the most challenging classes available to you at your school. Um, the reason that, that that context is so important, I always stress that, is that we are not comparing you to students, for instance, you know, if you go to a national school in Kazakhstan, we are not comparing you to students who are going to school in the United States and have access to an advanced placement curriculum. Um, or we're not comparing you to a student who goes to an IB program who has access to the IB diploma. Um, we're evaluating you in the context of your high school. Um, and we, you know, every school is going to be a little bit different, um, you know, with this, but at Villanova, we evaluate everything in-house. You know, we don't require you to submit any, um, any uh, credential evaluations from any of the companies that are out there. Um, you send your transcripts to us and all the other required academic materials, and we will evaluate it in our office, um, you know, myself or a member of our international team. Um, and so we've, you know, we've seen transcripts from all over the world. I've been doing this for 12 years now, right? So I've seen every pretty much, you know, transcript from every country out there. Um, and we understand, you know, certainly in, in some schools that the grading is a little bit harsher than others, right? We understand that context piece. So I, I just say that to, um, you know, hopefully that gives you some comfort knowing that, um, you know, the, the folks reviewing your, your application, um, you know, do have experience in that area. And we under, really do take a lot of care to understand the context um, that you're coming from, particularly when it, it comes to evaluating the academic piece. Um, and so you'll also see uh, some schools in the United States requiring standardized testing. This is, um, this is actually uh, news um, I will share with you. Uh, Villanova just announced a couple of weeks ago that we are going uh, test optional for this upcoming admission cycle. So that means that you will be able to apply to Villanova without um, submitting SAT or ACT scores if you choose to do so. 
Um, the reason that we made that decision is, as you know, um, due to the pandemic and other reasons that, that access to standardized testing has been extremely um, limited and we can only imagine the frustration that um, all of you have gone through, especially internationally, to try to get access to those tests. And so to take, you know, we wanted to take that burden off of all of our applicants. And so we've decided to go test optional for this next admission cycle. So um, I hope that's good news. Uh, I know that for a lot of students that will kind of be a big relief, um, sort of one less thing that you have to submit. Um, if you did, if you did take the test, you plan to take the test, you're still welcome to submit it. Um, of course, and we'll use that in the evaluation, but otherwise we'll just focus when we're evaluating your application more closely, um, really on the academics and the other pieces that you submit um, when, you, when you apply to Villanova. So, you know, the next um, sort of big chunk of, of things that we're looking at when we're evaluating your application are uh, personal qualities. And we get, um, we understand the personal context from a variety of different things that you're going to be submitting um, with your application. So, at Villanova, that, that for those uh, personal qualities, um, the requirements that we request kind of for that component, um, the main ones are uh, letters of recommendation. So we do require a letter of recommendation from a counselor um, or another school official. We'll also accept, uh, you know, that recommendation from an Education USA advisor, for instance, if that's someone that you've worked with closely. Um, we also require a teacher recommendation. So a uh, recommendation from a teacher in a primary subject area, preferably within the last two years. Um, we require, in the common application, there's a section where you would list any extracurricular activities. Um, and then there's also a variety of essays that you need to submit um, at the time of application. So there's a uh, sort of main uh, essay question through the common application. And then on the Villanova supplement, um, there's going to be two uh, supplemental essay questions that are um, they're called essays, but they're a little bit more like short answer questions uh, because of the word limit that's involved. And uh, you get your choice of, of uh, questions to answer there. So all those different pieces, right? We like to say it's kind of like a big jigsaw buzz puzzle that we put together to get a better sense of who you are and um, how you would fit in within the Villanova community. And the essay is a great way for us to be able to start putting those pieces together. Um, and so there's a couple of different sort of tips here I will share with you. Uh, general, this is not you know, specific to Villanova. Um, I would say this is good advice in general if you're going to be applying to the United States and uh, need to submit essays. But um, you know, my first, my first tip would be to, you know, to, to really try to make yourself stand out in a good way. And one way I like to, um, you know, to, to kind of talk about this is that your essay should really uniquely be about you. Um, one of my favorite stories to tell is, you know, every year there'll be a student you hear about who gets into all of the Ivy League institutions in the United States, and one of the first questions that people ask about is, well, what do they write their essay about? <laughs> and the, um, you know, of course, the problem with that is that, um, you know, when you write your essay, it sh you should be writing your essay. You shouldn't be trying to figure out what story did someone else tell to make themselves stand out, right? You should be writing your essay that's uniquely um, about you. And the best way to, to kind of see whether your essay uh, passes that test, uh, so to speak, is if you, you know, you, you wrote your essay and you had um, your name on the top of it, if you ripped your name off the top of it and you hung that essay up in your school, uh, could anyone, any of your classmates passing by read that essay and know that you wrote it, even though that your name is not on it, right? So it's really important to be able to, to make that essay uniquely um, about yourself. There's always, you know, you hear a lot of um, advice out there about what to write about. And, um, you know, there are some topics that are really overwritten. I would say, for instance, um, we read a lot about sport injuries. Um, we read a lot about 
uh, gosh, like for instance, students will write about, um, you know, if they're answering one of the essay questions about, you know, answer uh, about a, a person in their life who's, a, who's affected them, and they'll answer the question by, you know, talking about their, their grandmother who recently passed away. And, and all of that is, is really very sweet, and we love that you love your grandmother, but the essay should be about you. It should not be about your grandmother, right? Because you have to understand that we're using these essays to, to learn more about you and how you would fit in within our college campuses, right? And so we don't necessarily want to read about your, your grandmother. We want to read about, about you. So make sure that you really tie it back to you and your experience, your life experience, so that we get a better sense of, of who you are. And as for the supplemental essays, many schools like Villanova will have, uh, again, a, a you know, choice of short answer questions. Uh, one of our questions is, um, why do you, I'm messing the wording up a little bit, but uh, why would you like to be a part of the Villanova community? It's a pretty open-ended question, right? But it's a good chance for you to, to basically show us that you've done your research and that you, you know who we are um, and that you understand why you think you would be a good fit specifically for Villanova. Um, and I can't tell you how many times I've read um, an answer to that question and students will leave in the names of other institutions um, when they answer. So <laughs> please don't do that. Make sure that you do spend the time on those, on those essays. As for the activities list, students always have questions. They want to know, well, how many activities should I do? What should I do? There really is no magic formula. I can't stress that enough. So it's, it's not about quantity over quality or vice versa. It's really kind of a balance of both of those things. And this is again where context becomes very important because particularly for international students, we know a lot of times you're coming from environments, if you're you know, at a national school or a smaller school abroad, you're not gonna have access to, to extracurricular activities or very many of them. And um, I just say that so that you know, you know, we understand that, right? We're not gonna penalize you for something that, um, that you don't have access to. So just do the best job within the context of your environment to, to take advantage of activities. Or if you have passions outside of the classroom and you're, for instance, you're interested in computer science and you're able to take a, a free computer coding class online or, or um, connect with people virtually over a, over a hackathon or something like that, right? That just shows that you're, you're using what's ever available to you to, um, to, to explore your interests um, and activities. And that's, that's really what we're trying to, um, to see in this section. Um, and the part about connect the dots, you know, just to give you an example, I mean, sometimes we have students, you know, for instance, who say that, um, you know, that they're interested in, in studying biology. And we look at their application and, and we say, well, they, um, gosh, look, they've been involved in Science Olympiad at school and maybe they um, had won some local science award for a project that they did. And then we read one of their essays and they talk about how they want to get involved with science research at Villanova. And that's really helpful to us because we're able to kind of connect the dots and say, wow, this student really is passionate about science. Um, you know, if you're undecided, obviously, you know, you might not be able to do that, right? But um, for students who do have a clear academic passion, um, it is helpful to us to be able to kind of connect the dots there. And of course, letters of recommendation, I alluded to this a little bit already, but um, we do require two separate letters of recommendation. Um, my main advice here is, is to just, um, you know, make sure that you, ha you have, you ask someone who knows you well to be able to write these letters. Um, and we understand, particularly in international contexts, sometimes you don't have, uh, you know, teachers or counselors maybe who know you that well, but just do the best job that you can. And um, obviously we won't penalize you, um, you know, if, if you don't, your, your letters are, you know, a little bit shorter because your, um, your teacher, you know, does not know you that well. And last but not least, so additional factors. This is really going to vary, of course, a lot by school. But uh, some schools, for instance, will use demonstrated interest in the admission process. So if you've attended, 
you know, a virtual event or if you've emailed with the admission officer, um, <clears throat> they may um, kind of give you a leg up in the admission process because you've demonstrated your interest. Um, in Villanova, because of the volume of applications that we have, unfortunately, we're not able to do that. Um, but I would say, of course, if you do have questions, you should absolutely reach out to me. Um, I'm happy to sort of do one-on-one -on -one Skype sessions if you have questions, uh, you know, not to use that a part, as a part of your application evaluation, but just to answer questions about Villanova. Um, I'm also happy to put you in touch with any number of our current international students. Um, we have a great team in our international student organization that helps out with uh, connecting with prospective students and they're always super excited to make those connections. So if you do have questions for, for, in, for uh, any of our current students, I'd be happy to, um, to make those contacts as well. Um, and I'll return to the application process in just a second. But I did want to take a minute to talk a little bit about financial aid and some of the terminology that's out there. Um, at Villanova, we are need aware um, in the admission process for international students. And I would say that's, um, that's pretty common among schools in the United States. And the reason for that is because international students are obviously not eligible to receive uh, federal aid from the United States government. So um, that means that the cost of attendance is, is higher um, and the cost of the institution to be able to meet your financial need is higher. And so that is why that is your ability to pay for your education is one component that we're looking at when we're making admissions decisions. Um, at Villanova, we do offer need-based aid for international students as well as some limited merit aid. Um, our main merit scholarship is called the Presidential Scholarship. It covers the full cost of attendance. So that covers tuition, room, board, fees, plane tickets, everything. So it's a great scholarship. It's open to all applicants, domestic and international. Because it covers the full cost of attendance, it is um, also extremely competitive, um, obviously. So the, the main thing to know about that scholarship is that you do have to be nominated by a counselor specifically for that scholarship. Um, and so that has a little bit of a different deadline. You have to apply by December 1st, and there's that separate nomination process that goes along with that. And then typically there's about 25 or so uh, students who will enroll as presidential scholars each year among all of the academic colleges. So it's a really wonderful scholarship, but again, it's extremely competitive um, because of the um, because of the dollar amount attached to that. So that is our main merit scholarship. Um, in terms of need-based aid, really the main thing that you need to, to know is that you, you need to submit the CSS profile. Um, and all of our applicants are also um, required to submit certification of finance form and, um, and a, a recent bank statement that shows, uh, that, that supports the amount that you listed on that form that says you're able to contribute to your education. Um, at Villanova, we, we, it's not a hard and fast rule, but I would recommend that if you're going to be applying for need-based aid, um, that your family be able to contribute at least 15,000 US dollars to your education. Um, and then if we were to admit you, um, we would provide you with financial aid that's able to, to, co to close that gap and to, to meet your, your full, uh, your 100% uh, full demonstrated need. Um, so that's a little bit about our, our financial aid process. And you can see our deadlines here. Um, another thing for you to, to, to think about when you're applying to US colleges is that um, unfortunately, every school is, is different, but um, typically you'll hear some of these terms over and over again, the, 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 route, the application rounds that are offered. Uh, Villanova, we do offer early decision one and two. Early decision is a binding agreement. So if you were to be admitted to Villanova under early decision, you would be required to attend. Um, we also offer early action, which essentially means that you apply to Villanova early and you get your admissions decision early, or a, a little bit earlier than, um, than most students who apply. And then we offer regular decision as well. So the deadlines for early decision one and early action are November 1st. Um, early decision two and regular decision 
um, our January 15th. Um, so that's just a, you know, a quick overview of the, of the deadlines. And of course, all of this is on the website as well. I know it's a lot to, to take in, but we do have sort of a checklist on there and a list of all the dates and deadlines so that you can um, kind of help plan your application. So um, I think I will, I will leave it at that. I know that was a lot to take in. And um, I hope that that was a helpful introduction to you about Villanova um, and the admission process, um, just to kind of give you an idea of, of what we're looking at when we're evaluating applications. Um, but with that, I, um, I guess I will see if there are uh, any questions that I can answer for you. Should I just use the chat box? Is that the best way to do this? Um, yes, let's just use the chat box. And I actually put one question there that my students usually ask. Okay, let's see. Okay, so the question it looks like is about um, identifying, sort of identifying yourself on the common application. Um, Yes, it's regarding um, ethnic backgrounds. Kazakhstan, yeah, Kazakhstani students, they um, are trying to find something like Central Asian, <laughs> where right. we belong, but Common App doesn't have that option. And we're not white, but um, <laughs> we should be Asian. But again, like uh, people have questions and uh, they're afraid that uh, they will be compared to students from like China, um, South Korea and Japan, you know, like, um, do you take that actually into account when you uh, check applications? Yeah, that's, um, that's, that's very interesting. Yeah, that's kind of a question of, of self identity, you know, identity and, and um, I could see how that would be very confusing. Um, so, uh, so I guess the, my answer to the question is obviously, you know, you would answer that to the best of your ability as to how, however, you know, you feel comfortable and are able to use the option, you know, the limited options that they give you on the application um, to be able to identify yourself. Um, I would say, you know, with that though, I would not, I would not stress out about it. Um, for so typically the the reason that that ethnicity question is asked it's it's actually for demographics of uh of uh, domestic students so students who are u.s citizens or permanent residents um they ask about that background because then that that goes into race and ethnicity data that's used but only for that data is only used for U.S. citizens and permanent residents. So for anyone who identifies as an international student, so who's not a U.S. citizen or permanent resident, um, you know that that ethnicity question still shows up. But I would, I at Villanova, and I would say really any school um, because I know I know how the the data is externally reported. Um, for students who are non-U.S. citizens or permanent residents, um, you know, that ethnicity data does not um, get reported anywhere because first and foremost, you're, you're a non-U.S. citizen. So um, I, don't, I don't know if that helps answer your question. I, I would say, you know, answer however you feel, you know, comfortable to the best of your ability, um, but um, I would not um, stress out about it too much. <laughs> Thank you. And um, do we have any other questions? And I think I have actually a question regarding this um, religious affiliation. Mm -hmm. um, you know, like sometimes students from Kazakhstan actually do not want to apply to universities which have this religious affiliation because they're afraid that they will have to take some special classes or they will have to start uh, going to the church and so on. <laughs> right. And you just give kind of more information. Yeah, no, it's a, it's definitely a valid question. Um, and I would say, you know, one that is, is also shared by, by students in the United States as well, right? I mean, I think the reason that um, students, you know, ask that question is because they just want to make sure that when they, they get to campus, they feel like they're, they're a part of a, a community and that, um, you know, they're not going to be uh, you know, subject to any sort of religious indoctrination, um, you know, that they do not want to be, right? So, 
Um, you know, I would say it really, it really varies um, by the college or university in terms of um, how religious, you know, they feel and what the, the requirements are. Um, you know, but as I mentioned, you know, at Villanova, um, you know, I think what, what every student can relate to regardless of religious background is the value system that comes along with you know, Catholicism and our Augustinian heritage. So this idea that, you know, we're kind of all in this together. This is a level playing field. We're all looking out for each other. Uh, we want to create a sense of community on campus. We want to give back to the community. Um, so that I think is really, that's really the, the binding force among our students. For students who are Catholic and they want to go to mass, we do offer that daily, right? Um, if they want to take um, more religious studies classes, they can do that. Um, in terms of like, requirements, um, for us, there's really, um, you know, for most students, there's really only one requir required class. It is, it's called the Foundations of Catholicism. Um, in some cases, there's also a second class that's required. But I would say in both those cases, um, the classes, the way in which they're taught is more sort of a historical foundation rather than, um, you know, a, a sort of religious indoctrination, I guess, for a better way to put it, right? So um, certainly, you know, we're acknowledging that that's a part of our, our heritage, but um, it's there in a way that, you know, if students are, are, are Catholic and want to embrace it more that they can, but if they're not, that they will not, you know, feel, um, you know, excluded or ostracized in, in any way. This is great. And yeah, question from Yulia. I am coming from a Muslim country. Still, can I get accepted? Um, right. Well, yeah. And so we don't, you know, it's not even like we even ask on the application, um, you know, what your, what your religion is, right? Um, so we have, you know, we have a Muslim student association. Uh, we have an interfaith chapel, um, all kinds of uh, service activities. For instance, our um, we like to kind of say at, at campus, um, or on campus, that we have some schools in the United States will call it like alternative spring break where they do service trips um, to other countries or to areas of need to, to help out. And at Villanova, we, we say that it's, it's not even alternative. It's so mainstream that, um, you know, we just call it regular spring break. And a lot of those um, events are, you know, organized by any of our religious organizations, but of course they're open to, to all students. Um, and so, again, I think because of our, because of our founding um, and our heritage, I mean, this, the idea that of inclusivity is really important in everything um, that we do. Um, and it's certainly, of course, you know, not, um, you know, the religious question is not something that we even, you know, answer or ask on the application, so. Any other questions? It uh, looks like a question about um, scholarships. Uh, so full aid scholarship. So the, the only scholarship that we can guarantee covering the full cost of attendance would be the presidential scholarship that I mentioned. Um, and so that is, that's strictly a merit scholarship. And um, the deadline for that is December 1st um, to submit your application and to also be nominated by a guidance counselor or another school official. Um, or we'll also accept nominations from um, Education USA advisors for that as well. A uh, question about application deadlines. So these are, here's the slide with just the general information. Um, and then of course you can go to the, um, go to the website as well, uh, you know, for information on the deadlines. But again, so like November 1st is kind of our early deadline. So early action and early decision one. Um, I would recommend if you're going to be applying for financial aid, I would recommend staying away from early decision because it is a binding agreement. So uh, traditionally we have not awarded a lot of financial aid dollars to international students during early decision. 
Um, if they apply early decision and need financial aid, typically what we will do is defer them to the regular decision round so that we can review all of our international applicants that have financial have financial need um, within kind of the same the same pool. Um, so that's just sort of one recommendation that I would um, I would have there. A question about characteristics needed to enter Villanova. Um, so definitely, you know, as I mentioned earlier, the academics are very important. So students who are doing well in the classroom, we don't have a GPA minimum, um, you know, by any means, but I would say generally speaking on, on a U.S. scale, students would have a, you know, a B plus to A average in the classroom and they're taking among the most challenging classes available to them. Um, in terms of other characteristics, there's not, you know, not really an exact formula, but we just, um, you know, would like to, to see students who are, um, who are certainly interested in us and, um, you know, are passionate about something. So whether you've had the opportunity to kind of explore that passion through activities at your school or not, um, but just showing us in the application um, that you do, you know, have that passion and how you would like to apply that at Villanova. A uh, question about the political science program. Um, yes, yeah, so we do have political science. It's actually one of our larger majors in the, in the College of Arts and Sciences. Um, and one thing I, I did forget to mention in terms of the application process, um, when you apply to Villanova, you do apply to one of the four academic colleges. And in some cases, you're also applying directly to a major. So if you're interested in any of our science programs or engineering, you apply directly to a major. Um, but in the case of something like political science, you would actually apply just as a student, uh, general student to the College of Arts and Sciences. And then you would declare your political science major um, after you get here. So um, it's a great program. It's very flexible. So, um, you know, if you're interested, for instance, in focusing on, um, you know, international politics, um, or if you um, are interested in, in focusing more on, for instance, uh, you know, social policy and change, you can do that. Um, all of our programs, I would say there's a really big focus on that hands-on education. On average, students tend to do two if not three internships before they graduate and certainly the same holds true for um for students in political sciences as well so we certainly encourage you to um kind of complement your your in the classroom experience with um with internships and, and research if that's something that you're interested in any other questions Um, do you actually have uh, men's hockey? And is uh, it like, um, you know, like division one or division two? Yeah, we have it. Um, we have it as a club sport. Oh, club sport. Unfortunately. Yeah. So um, we don't, that's, we don't have it as, um, as division one, but we have it as, as club and potentially intra intramural, but we don't offer it at that, that top tier level. Mm. Guys, do you have any questions? We will have Allison for a couple of like more minutes. And I really want you to learn more about this university. And even if it's not specifically about Villanova, if you just have a questions applying to the US, they can help with that too. Uh, question about track and field. Um, yeah, track and field actually um, and, and cross country programs are really top notch um, division one level programs. Um, in fact, you know, Villanova has had, um, I think every year since the mid 1960s, we've had, you know, there's been a Villanova representative in, in the Olympics and most of those have been um, in track and field area. So it's actually a really great program. Um, if you're interested, you know, not just in track, but really any sport division one, um, what I would recommend doing is if you go to our athletics website, um, it's just Villanova.com. You can read more about the sport teams on there. And then there's also a, um, a form, like a recruit form that you can fill out that will put you in touch um, 
with the appropriate um, coaching staff. That was actually a good question. Um, do we have any other questions? So, um, like nomination, is it okay if I nominate several students or I should nominate just one? And the same goes for like school counselors. Um, can they nominate several students or they have to choose just one student? Uh, for the presidential scholarship, uh, you mean? For the presidential scholarship. Yeah, so um, for that, there is, there's a, a limit um, per school that um, can be nominated. I want to say it's, it's five off the top of my head. I can't, I can't remember exactly, but I know if you go to the, the presidential scholarship page, um, it does detail that information. So there, there is a cap, um, but you know, for someone like yourself, if you're working with students from different schools, um, you know, you could theoretically nominate, you know, more than that since they, they all don't, I'm assuming attend, you know, the same, the same school. Uh, because we have some schools uh, where like 100% of students apply to U.S. universities. Mm -hmm. um, when we reach out to school counselors, uh, competition gets so um, kind of like furious, you know, when it comes to <laughs> nomination. <laughs> so right. That's why I was like, oh, how many students can they nominate? And can I actually help them? Sure. Yeah, you know, yeah, and I would say, I mean, we really um, over the last you know few years, I I really have been um, trying to talk up the presidential scholarship more internationally um, because I think it's it's kind of um, it's not as well known that we that we have it, and we would really love to see more international applicants. Um, and so, you know, unfortunately, again, it's it's also it's a process by which you know anyone can apply, so domestic or international. So unfortunately, we don't have any reserve just for international. Um, but, you know, I would say in past years, you know, we've had, you know, probably up to up to three or, or four um, international students who were able to, to secure that that scholarship. Um, is it just one scholarship overall or are there like several slots? Uh, no, so typically overall, um, there's about 20, usually about 25 that are awarded um, because they're all they're spread out across all the academic colleges. Um, so the, the process is that in the admissions office, we kind of we manage the intake of those applications. Um, but then what happens is that um, there's, there's actually a separate office on campus that, that runs the selection process for the presidential scholarship. And each of the academic colleges has their own individual committees. Um, that will um, that will select scholars, uh, presidential scholars, um, you know, for that purpose. So, um, so that's kind of you know how that that process works. Mm -hmm. And when will uh, students hear um, if they got the scholarship or they didn't? So the um, the process for that is you know again like the the, the deadline is December first, and then there's kind of an initial review process that takes place. Um, and then usually um, in January, um, students who've kind of made it past that first cut um, will will get reached out to um, by by folks on the on that selection team. Um, and then there is an interview process that takes place. Um, it it does take place on campus, but obviously for international students. Um, they're welcome if they're able to they're welcome to come to campus and we'll, we'll arrange for that um, to to be able to, to pay for them to to attend. Um, but in the past, you know, some students haven't been able to do that. So they've they've done the interviews by by Skype and um, then typically by the end of um, by the end of February, they will they will know um, whether or not they've been they've been selected. So it's actually even earlier than um, getting this regular decision um, deadline. Correct. Yeah. Mm -hmm. This is good. Um, guys, maybe you have just like one or two questions, like really important questions. Any burning questions? Burning, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> because my questions were answered. <laughs> 
I might have one more question. So honors program, um, is it something that international students try to do? Because I know that this is kind of like more rigorous program. Sure. Yeah, no, absolutely. You know, any applicant um, can apply for it. And, um, you know, and honestly, um, at least for, for past years, the, the, the way to apply for it is actually just indicating your interest on the common application. Um, and so, um, you know, that's, that's kind of the, the process, the application process. Um, right now, the, the program is arranged that you do have to apply up up front, so as, as you know, as you're applying for for freshman admission, um, unfortunately, they don't have space available to be able to allow students to join the honors program after they're at Villanova. Um, but it's a great program. Um, so you know, each uh, honors student, you're taking a, a certain amount of uh, honors credits at Villanova. You have an honors advisor. Uh, you have access to special honors housing and um, other things like grants and travel opportunities, uh, yeah. research opportunities, you know, reserved specifically for honors students. Um, so you get that, that component of it as well. Um, but yeah, absolutely. Any student, you know, including internationals would be able to apply for that. And um, I think the last question is asked by Adil. Um, I think he's asking about this honors program. Is it available if we send November SAT score to early action? He's oh, okay. asking if you still accept November SAT. Sure, yeah. So, um, so typically, yes. I mean, as long as we receive the score um, by, mm, I mean, I would say mid, as long as you receive the score by the third week of November, um, you know, you should be, you should be fine. Um, if there's any question about that, you can always, you know, apply, apply test optional as well. Um, but, but in the past, typically we've been able to do that. Yeah, because um, here in Kazakhstan, we're like experiencing uh, some really kind of like challenging problems with this SAT test. Um, we have less SAT test centers, like uh, some large ones, they're closed. And we have difficulties even registering for the test. Some students spent several days trying to register. And we get all these problems with internet, with paying, and so on. So it's just getting more and more difficult. Right. So, like, yeah, I know. It's, I've heard all kinds of stories. And it's, um, I, just, I, I can't even imagine what students are, are going through to, to be able to, to access the test. Um, you know, and I, I think it was challenging before the pandemic hit, and I think it's even now it's yeah. even gotten so much worse. So I, yeah. I do, um, I really, you know, feel for you. Um, the one thing I, I didn't mention either, um, I, I totally forgot about this uh, just because I didn't, I was using a different slide, but, um, you know, in terms of English language proficiency, so if, if English is not um, your first language, um, we do require that you you satisfy English language proficiency, and there's there's a variety of ways that you can um, that you can do that, either TOEFL or IELTS, um, or we'll also waive it in circumstances if you've been, um, for instance, at like an international school since ninth grade, or if you have a 620 on the critical reading section of the SAT, mm -hmm. um, and all of that is on the website as well. But but just so you know, um, we have that yeah. information there too. What about Duolingo test? So um, I'll just say, just keep checking our website um, okay. in the next uh, two weeks and we'll have an announcement about that. <laughs> okay, that's yeah. good. Um, so next question is, what about SAT subject? Will it influence um, an application? So uh, at, yeah, yeah. Sure. At, um, at Villanova, we don't require SAT two subject. We don't require the subject tests. So uh, you know, obviously look at the, the schools that you're applying to, but um, we, we don't um, even put them in our system. So we, if you submit them, we won't, we won't see them. Okay, I have no questions. And I'm really thankful for this webinar. And um, I think students also do not have questions. It looks like they're not asking anything. Um, <laughs>
<laughs> it's just recently we get these problems with internet and even sure. uh, during the webinar my internet went off for several minutes and I just had no idea what to do and I was lucky that <coughs> you were co-hosting so that's why uh, probably we could still continue the webinar. <laughs> Um, so thank you a lot. I'm going to stop recording. <laughs>